Hey everyone, my name is Jimmy, and we are here. This is going to be week number four of the PGP, the Pokemon Grand Prix League War, and we are up against the NCP. And uh, this is going to be another really tough round. So we're going up against the NCP, and they are undefeated. They are one of the top two seeds, and uh, we've been keeping our uh, spot in the top four. We've been barely holding on, but uh, a win here would be absolutely huge. So uh, a lot's going on in this round right um there's a lot of difficult matchups here and honestly a lot happened kind of all at once right so a lot of matches came in really quickly and uh, a lot of mixed results just coming in one after the other so we did uh get a couple of really really tough losses a some close losses by randy hld and uh visual Lime came in pretty quickly but a uh, frosted coming off of her uh round 160 comes in with a follow-up 4-0 which was absolutely bananas huge for us um and then uh merrill's coming through with a 6-0 right uh in, a after the week that frosted got hers but uh like i said everything's coming in super duper mixed um in vivid color took a pretty rough loss and that's going to put us in a three two state so like i said this is going to be a huge huge matchup to win uh we can not only drop down uh a little bit the one of the top seeds but also really solidify our position in the top four and have a better time moving forward but um like i said the results are coming in super mixed and they all come in coming in just one after the other super quickly and uh ultimately this leaves us in a 3-2 state where uh the pgbl cannot lose another match and that's kind of where we were kind of going into my matchup where i battle stephen thurston and stephen thurston um as somebody against whom i have not had uh the best time he uh kicked me out of the apa academy playoffs in a really fantastic game like honestly i think one of um the most fun games that i've ever played but i played him twice in the apa academy and i know just how strong of a player he is he is uh really really good he had a very fantastic record fantastic seed and um this was a match where i really had to uh build well for him but i don't really think i had the best matchup so this is ultimately going to be the match over here i set the stage a little bit for um what's about to come but i'm gonna cut in to me playing this matchup i believe we are down three to two at this at the point of this recording and uh, we have one other match that it's yet to be decided so this match is legitimately um going to be a must win match if i lose this one then our entire chances for week four are out but uh okay so here we see the hydreigon tabu fini nita queen mega Galade, crustle and thunderous so right off the bat what is he leaving on the bench what is he leaving on the bench here he dialed in really really quickly so he probably knows exactly what he wants to do against my team okay so right off the bat no Lola muck no lick a tongue um no ferrothorn no ferrothorn is really really huge actually um okay okay i'm interested part of me wants to lead off with the garchomp although hmm I'm not too, too sure. I probably will lead off with the guard shot. No. Hmm. I'm going to lead off with the Infernape. I know it's kind of a basic lead, a really basic lead, but um, I'm too afraid of the Nita Queen lead, to be completely honest. And uh, I never really have a great matchup against Nita Queen, so um, I may or may not have made a huge mistake. I really thought that um garchomp would have a decent time against this team and it, and it kind of sort of does although although uh i don't have a great matchup at all against a scarf needle queen and it really does hurt me here um a scarf needle queen could genuinely hurt me quite a bit here um i'm <sighs> I honestly wouldn't be surprised if he just goes for a rocks play right now. I'm wondering if there's a real drawback to just clicking Flare Blitz here. Let me see. Also, yeah, no, I'm doing this with no with no Wi-Fi. This is this match is being hotspotted off my phone. 
So, I'm kind of honestly... Um, I'm gonna try to keep Calking to a minimum, because Calking is gonna be genuinely difficult with my entire, like, no internet having set up here. Uh, but, that's just about right for no bulk Crustle, which kind of makes me really afraid of uh, a Shell Smash set. Part of me really wants to go into Granbull, but I think Granbull is going to be more of a more of an emergency situation. I think what I would want to do is go into Jolty on here, just assuming that he would want to go for the rocks on turn one. And hmm, by the looks of it, Thunderbolt just misses out on the KO here. So, uh, so does Garchomp, which is pretty not great. Now, I wonder if this would be a free setup opportunity with Kartana here. It could be. Although, hmm, it would force in the Gallade, and the Gallade... Yeah, but I can always go into... I can always go into... Grand Ball on that, as well. Maybe the pressure, maybe just pressuring him in this situation is, um, ideal for me here. I think I'll just go for it. I think I'll just go for something really crazy here. Um, he does have a, a bunch of scarf options. Thunderous is a really scary scarf option here. He does try to get up a spike. So, why not, man? I'll just try to... Get up a Swords Dance, and at the very least, it's going to force him the Gallade, which, which will allow me to bring in the Gramble, or um, it'll force him to reveal a Scarfer earlier than I imagine he would want to. So I guess we can try to play off of that right now. Um, I would really like Kartana to be like an absolute win con, but I don't think it is. Also, I was saying I was talking earlier about a huge mistake potentially that I may have made. I, I really did think that Garchomp um, could clean up late in the match, and it kind of can, but... Uh, I think Necrozma would have been a much, much better bring here. I think Necrozma would have been a much, much better bring here. Does uh, just get up some hazard, and that's going to be kind of bad against my team. Although, it's not the worst. It's not the worst. And uh, that should... Uh, let's see. I mean, like even, even if this thing is max HP, I think at plus two, it just doesn't matter anymore. Uh, I would be very curious to, see, to know what he brings in here, and now he has to respect a potential Sash as well. So who knows? He he could have hard. He could be hard. Expect me to, to have brought this in. Uh, thinking that I was trying to preserve a Sash, and if that is the case, then he would have to give up something to me in order to. Um, break Sash. Although, n although realistically, he could just um, go into Scarf High Dragon, click U-turn, sack something off there, then that breaks the Sash and allows him to go back into High Dragon and click Flamethrower. So I guess that would be his play if um, he really did fear the Sash, which he could really be fearing the Sash. Although, uh, I don't know. There is the Leaf Blade. There's the Leaf Blade, and that's going to be a plus three in attack. Although... Hmm. My positioning's awkward. I don't... I'd be surprised if the Thunder is Scarfed, although it just... It can be. It for sure can be. The Dragon makes the most sense as a Scarfer, um, and I don't know if you'd want to bring in the Glade this early on. I don't know. He is forced to bring in the Gallade here. He is forced to bring in the Gallade here, and I think that just pretty much means he has to click close combat on me. Which means I can go into Grand Bolt, and then that would probably force him to want to go into the Tfini or the Nidoqueen, which in, in either case means that I click uh, 
um, Super Fang here. And let's see. Let's see here. Goes for the close combat. Let's see, let's see, let's see. That will very freely allow me to go for a Super Fang. I would expect either the Feeny or the Nidoqueen to want to come in here. And honestly, in this case, getting 50% off on either of those mons would be super important for me. This honestly isn't even a matter of trying to win early on. It's about, I guess, trying to get enough damage onto his team where... A late game Jolteon or Garchomp or um, Infernape would matter here. I'd be very curious to know if this Glade would pack the Ice Punch on it on the set, but um, I guess that's a pretty sizable if right now. He does withdraw. I would expect to see the Feeny, although Nidoqueen is definitely a possibility. And that is the Nidoqueen. And... Uh, let's see. Actually, this thing could be Scarfed. If Crustle was like the big hazard setter, then this thing could absolutely be Scarfed. And if this thing is Scarfed, then I kind of don't win. Uh, this thing could actually be Scarfed. This thing could actually be Scarfed. Although, if it is Scarfed, it would absolutely go for Earth Power instead of Sludge Wave. It can't lock itself into Sludge Wave. And I should take an Earth Power, theoretically. Assuming this is Max Special Attack, Shimid, T Timid, Sheer Force, Life Force, I actually never take, a, take an Earth Power. So, clicking Earth Power from here can potentially win him the match. Um, What would I want to do in this situation? I really don't want to give the Garchomp this early on. I don't know what to do in this situation. Because I because I really don't have a Mon that I want to give up right now. I really don't have a Mon that I want to give up right now. I guess Granbull is the closest thing to that. I can risk it. Maybe he's making an overprediction here. And I can click Earthquake here, but I guess we just have to see. It does go for an Earth Power. And if this takes me out... Oh, okay. I was going to say, if it takes me out, then it's absolutely just max special attack, sheer force, life for. But uh, it doesn't look to be that, although it could be defensive. It's not. Okay. We need a Queen out of the way is so huge. Okay, that's a crit. That... Mm. I mean... It was almost definitely max HP. It was almost definitely max HP. Okay, I don't think it ever mattered. It doesn't look like it ever mattered. It would have to be like max HP, max defense for that to have mattered. Yeah. If it was just max HP, if it was if it was especially defensive Nita Queen, then um it didn't matter. If it was a max if, if it was just max HP, then uh it never matters, I don't think. I guess I'll just have to find out later on. But now I'm curious, okay, I really, really think that he's, um, trying to push me into an overpredict by switching out into something, preserving the Intimidate, and getting up, like, a sword dance or something to that effect. I really think that's what he's trying to do here. And it really just makes you want to click Play Rough. He could try to set up a sub on me as well. He could honestly try to set up a sub on me as well, and I think, yeah, I think it was m way more worth it to try to... Um, deal with this thing this way. I could, I could go into, huh. I don't think anything that I do... I don't think any mon I have can just... Straight up.
can just straight up um take this thing out without prior damage. Let me see. Um I mean Muck takes a hit, right? Oh, Gunshot does a lot more damage than I would have expected. Gunshot does a lot more damage than I would have expected, but it's not time for that yet. I really could just go into Guard Chomp here. I really could just go into Guard Chomp here. But if he does have the Ice Punch, he has. See, yeah, he definitely could have the Ice Punch still. Um, I could give the Jolteon here. Yeah, I think giving up the Jolteon for damage here is probably the best play that I can make. Let's just go for it. Let's just try to get some damage off here. I don't... I, I have no idea what he wants to do here, is a thing. I don't know how much he's going to try to play Glade as his win con. I mean, it's a really good win con, to be fair. I think I think he can for sure try to preserve this thing, and it would really do him well for the rest of the match. But at the same time, he's not really in that great of a position to just kind of switch out all willy-nilly and let his team take damage. Um, Finny is going to switch in. Hydreigon's going to get worn down, and Hydreigon would have to be... Um, Scarf to be able to deal with Jolteon. Um, Thunderous would be a little bit of a hard read here. But even then, um, letting the Thunderous get worn down a little bit here would be really not ideal. Excuse me. Does withdraw. Is this the Thunderous? No, it's this thing. Okay. I mean, the fact that he took so long to think about it, that did very little damage. Um, I don't know what that really means. I, dr I know I just said that I would try to keep uh, Calgon to a minimum, but that did, what, like 10%? 15? That's 15, I think. T 10 to 15. Um, this thing is max HP? This thing like AV. Does AV mean that I take a hit? It probably means that I take a hit, right? That's almost definitely that's at least max HP. It might not be an AV, but it's at least max HP. I'm gonna click signal beam though. Goes for the EQ, so it does outspeed me. It is scarf. It's max HP scarf? I don't know. But it doesn't ever outspeed me. That shouldn't ever outspeed me without being scarfed. Which. Probably lets me get off a really free knockoff here. I mean, Leaf Blade is also just so strong here. But what's Leaf Blade doing to an incoming Thunderous? Uh, Kartana against Thunderous. Oh, Leaf Blade barely even does... Leaf Blade actually does more than Knockoff, but barely more. Oh, that's assuming you're holding an Electrium Z. Oh, yeah, Knockoff does way more. Yeah, I'm getting... I'm going to take the opportunity for a reasonably free Knockoff here. That will be the Thunderous. And that's a... Okay, so it's a Z-Move Thunderous. That's a Z-Move Thunderous, and that also means that, uh... 
I can't KO this thing straight up. If it was anything but a Z move thunder, well, he brought it in knowing that. But yeah, anything but a Z move thunderous, and th and there should be two KO'd. But what can I do knowing that this is Z move? What can I do knowing that this is Z move? I can go into muck. I can go into muck. That's not too bad. That's not the worst. Um, how much do I really need this? I really need this against the Feeny. If this thing goes down, then I have to rely on the Muck to deal with the Feeny. And... Hmm... How much is that extra damage worth it to me? I'm gonna go into Muck. This was a tough one. This honestly was a really tough one. Because I know Leafly doesn't do enough damage, but that much damage might honestly make the world of difference. But uh, he will go for an Agility, which I don't think is gonna matter a whole heck of a lot. I don't think that's gonna matter a whole heck of a lot. It will let me click Gunk Shot. Uh, he could Z move me, but I think I should. I'd be um, I'd be very surprised if I didn't take a Z move. I'd be surprised if I didn't take a Z move. Yeah, I take it pretty comfortably. In fact, what I should do is click Recycle. Although no, I have to click Gunk Shot because um, just in case he went for a nasty plot. Um, yeah, I can already start to get a feel for how this match is going to go. The Hydreigon is, in fact, Scarfed, and this thing is the only thing that forces it into, into, uh, click, having to click Earthquake. It honestly would have, maybe would have been better if that, if that thing didn't get KO'd, because... I could have clicked Recycle there, but he could click Nasty Plot on my Recycle. It could, it could have been bad. Like any time, any moment that he was able to click Nasty Plot, it would have been really bad for me. But regardless, um, being able to get that—that that was a modest one, by the way. I'm just realizing that was modest as heck. Yeah. Um, I think now he has to rely on Gallade. But if he does rely on Gallade, then I think he knows that that allows something else in. I think he's trying to count out what Gallade's doing right now. Gallade Close Combat would KO me, although he would, again, have to rely on Close Combat. Um, which would, in theory, allow in... Yeah, he has to make this play. He has to make this play. Although, I think I honestly might just need this for the Hydreigon still. I can get close combated on something. I don't think that's the biggest deal in the world. I don't think that's the biggest deal in the world. I think I have to try to make some plays in this endgame here. Some pretty darn aggressive ones, too. This is a Haban Berry Garchomp. By the way. We end up taking that. Which is interesting. I'm interested. And I think that kind of just forces me into clicking Dragon Claw just in case. 
he tries to go into Hydreigon here. He could assume that I'm Scarfed. Or, is that the Hydreigon? No, okay. It's going to be this thing. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. He, he thinks that I'm Scarfed for sure. He thinks that I'm Scarfed for sure. But I can Poison Jab, get some damage off. And actually, once this thing goes down, once this thing goes down, that's going to allow me to go into Muck and click Recycle for reasonably free. Unless this thing has Taunt. Oh, I didn't even think about that. I didn't even really properly think about that one. Hmm. What I might be forced into doing is go into Infernape and threaten po and threaten Gunk Shot. There's the Poison Jab. I think he was deciding whether or not I was Scarfed. But that does a very decent amount of damage. And... Uh, I wonder if he does go for taunt. Well, no, he's never he's he's never in a position to go for taunt because then that would force me to click gunk shot, and if I ever click gunk shot, then um the fiend either has to eat that or or either the fiend eats that or uh let's go for the moon blast. Maybe he doesn't have the the taunt. Dual st that a, oh special attack. Okay, I was I was kind of worried there. Um, dual stab, defog, and something else. I don't, I'm not too too sure. Maybe hidden power, hidden power. Hmm. HP fire. I guess that makes sense. Maybe that makes sense. I have to click curse. I think. Nature's Madness. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. That's totally fair. Although... Wait, what? I have to click Recycle. I think this Muck... This Muck might, this muck might be might, the only way that I win. Um... How much PP... How much PP does Nature's Madness have? It probably maxes out at 16, if I had to guess, actually. Um, Nature's Madness, oh, the calc doesn't even say PP. Uh, let me think here. I'm going to click Recycle again. Yeah, because I think I'm ending up healthier, and I think if I end up healthier and I'm in a position where I can curse up, if I can curse up to plus three, then I think the game's over. I think. I think. If I can be at, at plus three and reasonably healthy, then that could be how I win. But it's going to depend on a lot. It's going to depend on a lot, a lot. Oh, 
Although Nature's Madness is a an enormously good bring. It's an enormously good bring. He could choose this as a turn to switch out, but I don't know. Let's see. Mega Gallade. And if I'm at plus three. If I'm at plus three, then a max attack Mega Gallade. Does a max of 73? I have to click Curse. It was for Ice Beam. Now he's going for a Freeze, actually. That's super interesting. That's super interesting. And I guess he's also trying to preserve his Nature's Madness. He's trying to predict me into... Um, I mean, it does a few things. It, it preserves his Nature's Madness. It goes for the Freeze hacks. It... Um, And he's trying to kind of call me here. Oof, that was... Ooh, okay, okay, okay. Okay. I mean, there's not even really a question. I have to click... Recycle again. There's the Nature's Madness. But I mean, once I get to plus four defense. Close combat is not doing much. I don't even know if I'm, if, if I'm really in a position where I'm doing a whole heck of a lot to Tapu Fini anymore. Uh. How much is a plus four gunk shot doing to Feeny? Oh my god. Let's see max defense Feeny. Not plus three, correct? Yeah, I'm gonna... I mean, I have to try to get to plus four at least. <sighs> okay, that's huge. That's huge. That's huge. I'm gonna go, I'm, I'm just gonna go for it, man. Because at plus five... I really don't want to play this game this way either. But... At this point, I have to click Recycle. It's going for another freeze, which is totally fair. There it is. There it is. I got... Okay. Oh, my God. All right. Okay. That's a little bit of getting bailed out, for sure, for sure. But... I think that's more than enough health to close out this game, as long as I can land some gunk shots here. Uh, okay. There we go. I think he kind of has to bring in... Actually, let me see. What's Hydreigon doing to me? Hydreigon... Hydreigon is... Scarfed, we can assume. And it does have EQ, but I'm at plus 5 defense. I don't think that's the biggest deal in the world. Oh, Draco takes me out. Not all the time, though. I have to click Recycle. I have to hope that I take a Draco. <sighs> Man, okay. I don't even know what to say anymore. I'm, I'm gonna... I have to do this on my phone, but I'm gonna say I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry, man. I'm going to click Recycle again to try to ensure whatever I can ensure here. There's going to be a Draco that lands.
And now I can really, really freely start clicking gunk shots. Although, although I'm reasonably sure. Yeah, I don't even know. I'm just gonna click gunk shot. I'm just gonna click gunk shot here. Well, this was a must-win match, so uh. It's hard to feel, like, too, too badly, although, uh, this will bring it down to one final match, uh, a Sky Rainer match. And if he wins, then we win the week. If he loses, then, he, then we lose the week. Um, so it's definitely not over yet. It's definitely not over yet. But, yeah, it's definitely gonna come all down to this, and he missed Anisha's Madness and a Draco, which I believe are both 95% accurate, and... Uh, I landed a gunk shot, which is 80%, I believe. It's 80 or 85. That's a crit. Okay. Okay, that's... De that's... Okay. So now I guess we see whether or not Glade can beat me still. I'm at plus 5 defense. Uh, Let's see... Uh, close combat is always a KO. Although, once he drops his defense, then Infernape comes in and wins the match. I don't think he can go for anything else. I don't think he can go for anything else. Uh, but let's see. Yeah, Flare Blitz does... Flare, Flare Blitz should do enough after... He drops defense, but uh, I think just the fact that he could click like Ice Punch means that because I'm a plus five, right? I'm in fact a plus five, correct? Yeah, I think that means that I should click Recycle because if he does click Ice Punch. Yeah, yeah, he either drops his defenses through close combat or clicks Ice Punch. We take that and we recycle. So, recycle is always the best play here. Does go for the close combat. That should always take me out, assuming that this thing is just max attack. But that defense drop should mean that Infernape can come in. And uh, click Flare Blitz for a pretty darn narrow win here. This was... I mean, I don't even know, really, what to say about this match. I really don't even know what to say about this match. Uh, but... Yeah, I don't know. Let's see. That's the KO, and that's going to be the week. Uh, it's been a long, long time. Get, finally getting back into, into live comms. Honestly... Um, looking back at it, I probably should have brought Necrozma instead. Necrozma probably would have been better for the team overall. But, uh, Alolan Muck just kind of put the team on its back and came through for us. I don't think there's any way that I win this match if it wasn't for Alolan Muck. And, uh, just honestly, also just landing all those very inaccurate moves. Being able to break through freeze hacks and... I don't know. I'm honestly speechless. Okay, so that was honestly a really, really stressful win for us. But uh, we did end up getting the win, which was so, so huge. And that's going to ultimately knock it down to Skyrander. And these are all playing Sunday night on the night that these are due, right? So um, I just picked up a win, which meant uh, that we would be in a 3-3 state. And we could kind of try to play for the win with Skyrander. And um, Skyrander had a little bit of a delay. Uh, his match had to be postponed until Monday. Uh, there was a lot of uh, g going back and forth about just scheduling, and it just didn't work out with time zones and those sorts of things. But uh, Skyrander ended up losing 5-0. Uh, the only message that I got from him was that he got stalled quite a bit. And just looking at the matchup, uh, there are some huge monster threats like the Megaltaria, the Celestela, um, Chestnut, Mesprit, Arcanine, and Palisade, which are just 
huge, huge kind of uh, walls to break through. Any of those could have been built ridiculously bulky, and I could definitely see uh, where that could have happened. But uh, it is going to mean that we do drop another week. But uh, as before, we will maintain a spot in the top four, which is going to be uh, the biggest thing for us. We can uh, take this result and move forward with it, kind of um, build on it, and hopefully get uh, to where we need to be in the at the end of this seven weeks so that we can um, be in the top four top cut playoffs and that's where we can really do damage we will be playing a bunch of these people again almost definitely if we do make it to that um, playoff spot but uh, the biggest thing here is that we did take a loss uh, our differential has been such that this will keep us in the top half I believe um, at this at the point where this where this round ended uh, we were tied in record with the ICBA but uh, just we won more matches than they, than they did so that gave us that extra bit of differential over them at this point so like I said it's gonna be a lot to build on and uh, we will be making it to the playoffs almost definitely uh, as long as we can keep winning our matches and that's what we hope to do but with that it's again thank you guys so much for watching we'll be back really really soon with more weeks of the league war with more weeks of the um ICBA playoffs and uh, the APA Academy is coming back really, really soon. There's lots of other stuff in the near future, but with that, once again, thank you so much for watching. I hope you once again. Yeah.